first day, we decided to go on a hike to Diamond Head Crater. But first, since we hadn't eaten anything, I decided to stop by this food truck right in front of the trail. They had pineapple whip, which is something that I've been meaning to try in Hawaii, and it was so refreshing. The hike takes about 30 minutes to get from the bottom to the summit, and it's a pretty sweaty hike, but otherwise it's well paved and the views are magnificent. It's pretty close to Waikiki Beach, which is where most of the resorts in Oahu are. Next, we went to a spot called Marigami Udon that I'd really been looking forward to. It's a spot that's beloved by locals and tourists alike, so you know it's good. The line is always long and out the door, but it moves pretty quickly. I was pretty surprised that this place made their udon from scratch, mostly because the udon is pretty affordable at around $4 to $7 a bowl. This place is a tempura lover's dream. They have all different kinds of tempura from shrimp to potato to pumpkin to calamari to even egg tempura. And I gotta say the egg tempura was my favorite one here. The outside is super hot and crispy, and the inside is custardy, sweet, and savory. This place is so good, I actually ended up ordering delivery from this place to my hotel a couple of days later. And if you're curious what I've been using to record, I've been using the Hohem's iSteady X2. It's incredibly light and easy to use. Here's a shot I've taken of an acai bowl. I highly recommend getting this in Hawaii. I had it almost every day. If you're also interested in purchasing a gimbal stabilizer for your phone, I'll include a link to the one I used down my description box below. For dinner, we had reservations for a spot called Duke's Waikiki. It's an incredibly popular location and reservations are usually made months ahead of time. They're super popular because they're located right along the beachfront. They have tiki vibes and fun cocktails and they're actually most known for their hula pies. Hula pie is a dessert that's made out of vanilla ice cream, Oreo crust, and then drizzled in chocolate sauce. It was delicious. So one of the perks of being in Hawaii is that it's so close to Japan and there's so many good Japanese restaurants. One that I really enjoyed was Ginza Byron Tonkatsu. As you can see from the name, they are known for their tonkatsu, but they also have an incredibly good omelet rice. The egg is incredibly creamy on the inside with soft curdles and a delicious savory gravy on top. Tonkatsu was as crispy as it could be on the outside while being incredibly succulent on the inside. Another spot that I was really looking forward to was Maguro Bros. I actually first saw the spot on YouTube and I knew I had to go. They have two locations, one in Waikiki and one in Chinatown, and their hours are kind of odd. They're only open 5 to 8 p.m., but they have such a huge variety of different types of sushi bowls. We got a mix of Chutoro, Tomago, Uni, Ikura, and scallops within our bowls and they were delicious. We decided to just take it to go back to our hotel because they don't have any seating. The next day we decided to head to Blue Water Shrimp for some food that felt a little bit more local. If you're in Hawaii, you have to try Hawaiian Sun. They're in like every single store and they're super good. The shrimp was incredibly creamy, garlicky, savory, basically everything I want in a main dish. And I decided to get tuna poke as well. Because you're in Hawaii, why not? After our meal, we decided to go to Manoa Falls for another hike. 
This one wasn't too bad of a hike either, but we did go on a very rainy day and it is a very rocky and muddy hike, so it was slippery during some parts. However, there's so much green foliage, I literally felt like I was in Jurassic Park. At the top of the hike, you end up getting to this waterfall. We didn't go in because it was starting to get dark around that time. For dinner, we went to Aloha Table, which sells a lot of Hawaiian food, and they're most famous for their loco moco. Loco moco is a Hawaiian dish that has rice topped with a burger patty, topped with a fried egg, and then drizzled with gravy. It's a super comforting dish, and the rice acts as a perfect vehicle for the juiciness of the burger patty, the creaminess of the egg yolk, and the gravy. The next day, we were on our way to the Polynesian Cultural Center. I highly recommend coming here if you haven't already. It's a way to really get an authentic Polynesian experience. It's located on the northern shore of Oahu, so it was about a one hour drive for us. At the Polynesian Cultural Center, they have six simulated tropical villages in Polynesia. At each of these villages, they'll have performers demonstrating various arts and crafts, and visitors can even get a chance to partake in these crafts themselves. It's a super fun and entertaining day, which I highly recommend for anyone visiting Oahu. There are a bunch of food trucks right around the entrance, and my favorite one was Tita's Grill. They are a no-frills Hawaiian fare food truck, and my favorite dish from them was the garlic shrimp and galbi. There are canoe rides that will also bring you around the villages, and overall makes for a very pleasant and relaxing day. You get to visit the villages for about five hours and afterwards you get to go to a dinner buffet. The dinner buffet was honestly much more big and expansive than I was expecting. They had so many different types of foods from classic western foods to Asian foods to Hawaiian fare. We were at the buffet for about an hour and a half before we had to go to our show for the night. The show was an hour and a half and I couldn't really get any footage there because they didn't allow for it. The next day we went to Hanama Bay. It's one of Hawaii's best known snorkeling beaches and it's actually a marine life conservation area. It's an ideal spot for snorkeling because there are tons of coral reefs and fish right under the water. We actually bought our snorkeling gear from an ABC store for about $20 and it worked great. You get to see so many large fishes up close and you don't need to go deep at all. Just be super careful of not stepping on coral reef and wearing coral reef safe sunscreen. For lunch, we went to Leonard's Bakery. This is one of the most well-known bakeries in Oahu and they're known for selling malasadas, which are Portuguese donuts. They have tons of different flavors and they come fresh, piping hot, and it is honestly so delicious. If there's one place you must go when you come to Oahu, it's probably Leonard's. I even decided to buy a huge box home and bring it back with me to New York. They have different types of fillings from cream to guava to chocolate and even a daily special. Today's was s'mores. After we went to Ono Seafood, it's a local no frills poke spot and it's super popular amongst tourists as well. And they scoop huge amounts of fish. Here I got spicy tuna and shoyu tuna. For our last night in Oahu, we decided to pay a visit to Paya Fish Market. It's one of the most highly reviewed seafood restaurants in Oahu and it's, it's extremely clear why. They have one of the best fish sandwiches anywhere on the island and the fish is super fresh with a lot of different types of variety and they serve it in different ways from fish and chips to grilled over rice to a fish sandwich. I was worried that the fish would turn out too dry, but it's actually one of the best fish sandwiches I've ever had. The fish was so succulent and juicy and tender and extremely flavorful within the bread. 